When I first read about LKA's Martha is Dead, a psychological thriller game where you play a young girl in 1940s Italy as she investigates the murder of her twin sister, I absolutely couldn't resist. Even more so when the gameplay trailers hinted towards horror themes. The story sounded truly compelling, and the setting and atmosphere felt incredibly unique. The true question is whether Martha is Dead lives up to the hype. Unfortunately, it falls a little flat, and how close it came to being a masterpiece is what let it down the most. Martha is Dead is set in the Italian countryside of 1944, as the conflict between German and Allied forces draws near. You play as Julia, the daughter of a German general who has moved his family to Italy during the war. We start off as Julia is taking pictures of a lake close to her home when she discovers a woman's body floating in the water, her deaf twin sister, Martha. As well as being the protagonist, Julia also narrates the story as it progresses, and points out that her mother has always despised her and favored Martha. As Julia drags her twin sister from the lake, her parents come rushing over. They recognize Martha is wearing one of Julia's dresses, and mistake Julia for her twin sister. In that moment, Julia fails to correct them, and ends up unwillingly stealing her dead sister's identity. Although Julia's recollection of that day is unclear due to her trauma, one thing she knows for certain is that someone has murdered her sister. While her parents and the military assume this to be a political incident, Julia believes otherwise and sets out to find the killer. As Julia, you will investigate the case by interacting with objects around the house and taking pictures as evidence. Julia is a keen photographer and will collect different add-ons for her camera as you explore, which will broaden the kinds of pictures you can take, from close-ups to thermal images. Two key areas of the house are locked, Martha's lockbox and Julia's childhood bedroom. You need to access them in order to solve the case. The Italian countryside presented in Martha is Dead is drop-dead gorgeous. Created on the Unreal Engine 4, Martha is Dead demonstrates some beautiful visuals and incredible graphics for an indie game. The atmosphere is perfect, and the area is almost serene as you explore the house and the grounds around it with the birds tweeting in the trees and the golden hour sun filtering in. I did encounter a few graphical glitches during my playthrough, with some walls of the house failing to load textures for the whole duration of the game and, at some points, the darker areas of rooms became completely pitch black and almost impossible to make my way around. However, this is based on a review copy, so hopefully these issues will be ironed out in a day one patch. The gameplay is fine for a story-driven game. As you interact with certain objects, Julia will often give you a backstory around them to give you more information on her character, her family, and 1940s Italy. One of my main criticisms with the gameplay would be that the markers for interacting with objects are very small and easy to miss, especially if you don't have the best eyesight. A sound cue similar to the one used in L.A. Noir when you draw near to an interactable object would have been well suited for this, especially when the environment is so detailed that these markers don't stand out very well. You are also unable to select certain quests to focus on, making it incredibly difficult to complete the quests that aren't part of the main story, as their objective markers won't appear on the map. The dialogue is unskippable, which is manageable, until you accidentally select an object and Julia starts to suddenly start narrating about it. Then you have to wait for her to finish it until you can move on, and the majority of the time it's needless information. You're also not given the option to simply read letters rather than having Julia read them aloud. As someone who reads quite quickly, I much prefer being able to skim over them myself rather than having to listen to Julia blabbing along. Some of the settings also don't seem to work. During some of the more intense scenes, your controller will vibrate if you're using one. However, on PlayStation 5, this vibration is so intense, it's actually annoying and distracting from what goes on in the scene. I even had to put the controller down on the sofa to give my hands a rest from the vibrations, and the entire sofa began shaking as a result. I tried turning off the vibration in the menu, but the game just ignores this and carries on anyway. And that's another point. You can't change the settings in-game. You have to go back to the title menu, even if it's something small. As well as the main story, Martha is Dead also had several side missions the player could complete around the map. One of these includes potentially aiding a rebellion that your friend was part of, or instead turning them into your father. This adds a little bit of extra depth to Martha is Dead's World War II setting, and it almost seems to give the player the option to rectify the fact that Julia's father is a German soldier who she blindly supports, by having her betray him for a cause that she doesn't have any clue about. But aside from this mission, the side quests feel tacked on to increase the amount of gameplay offered. 
Most of the time they feel pointless, such as watering the flowers in the chapel, or finding a pump for your bike, so that you can travel around the map quicker. This is not essential. You can get around just fine walking, as the map isn't very big. As well as exploring the grounds around Julia's house, the gameplay also includes interacting with cutscenes by pressing buttons to prompt Julia to perform certain actions. A classic tactic of, again, lumping in some more player interaction to a story-driven game for the sake of having more things to do. I've always hated this kind of gameplay. It feels pointless to press a button for the character to lift something, or pick up an object during a cutscene. I'd rather them just let us watch it unfold properly. On top of this, Martha is Dead takes the kind of gameplay way too far, as I'll explain below. When Martha is Dead hit headlines just a few weeks before its release due to a controversial move by Sony to enforce censorship into the game, I thought, what on earth is in this game? For this to be censored, and not the likes of the Resident Evil series, or The Evil Within, or Outlast, or The Last of Us Part Two. Of course, this isn't the first time that Sony has stepped in to protect the innocent eyes of its customers. There was a brief period after Devil May Cry 5's release when the PlayStation version, in some regions, were deprived of the opportunity to gaze upon the bare butt cheeks of several of its female characters, their dignity preserved by a tactically placed lens flare. Unfortunately, they couldn't help us out of this cannibal phalluses in the forest, or uh, save us from the embarrassment of our parents walking in while we're styling our pubes in Cyberpunk 2077. But all I can say is, thank god I didn't have to see some of the hottest female characters in video games naked, because that would have scarred me much more than being chased by a giant aborted fetus in Resident Evil Village. All of this is to say, I am in line with the majority's opinion. I do not agree that this kind of censorship, especially when it's for a game that's developed for adults and has already been given an age rating based on its country of distribution's laws. However, in terms of the content presented in Martha is Dead, I'm reflecting on my previous stance. When the news came out that a certain scene would be censored, I assumed that these scenes would be removed entirely. This is not the case. Martha is Dead already gives you the option to censor such scenes and to keep them out of the game altogether. This content includes graphic imagery of violence and a scene featuring an abortion. If you're playing the game on PlayStation, these scenes are not cut out if you have opted to play the game uncensored. What is cut is the prompt to get the player to press buttons and perform these actions themselves such as a scene where the protagonist has a vivid nightmare of cutting off her own twin sister's face and then wearing it. The cut content is the player having the controller input to use the scissors to remove the face. It's a similar scenario in one scene featuring an abortion. On this occasion, I agree with Sony's decision. Such interactions are incredibly extreme and unneeded. Just watching this was bad enough. In fact, these again feel tacked on to increase shock value and horror. I hated this tactic in The Last of Us Part 2, and I hate it here. It's not just showing the protagonist is morally grey, but it's also forcing the player to undertake these actions that they don't really need to. Unfortunately, although Martha is Dead's story starts off on a high note, it gradually declines midway through the game. Julia's whole investigation is pretty ropey. To begin with, the only suspect is either Julia or her mother, so take your pick. In a mystery game, there are two possible suspects presented to the player, unless you believe her parents' theory that it was a political move, which doesn't exactly do much for any intrigue surrounding the investigation. On top of this, the way Julia goes about gathering suspects herself... On top of this, the way Julia goes about gathering evidence and using it to narrow down the investigation is also questionable. At one point, she even suspects herself of murdering Martha, as her memory is hazy. So, she collects her film roll from her photography session from that day, and summarizes that, because there is footage of her rescuing her sister's corpse from the lake, she couldn't possibly have had a psychotic breakdown and murder her, even though there is missing footage of her sister actually being murdered, and, like Julia says herself, her memory is unreliable. None of this is to mention that Julia's actions and decisions are incredibly frustrating at the best of times. She encounters German soldiers chasing rebels through the woods, so... decides to follow them. Oh, surprise, she's shot. Who could have predicted that one? On top of this, her investigation relies heavily on tarot cards and talking to ghosts. Even though this is following Italian folklore that the game explores, it's annoying how this is included in the investigation and then treated as viable evidence. With this, the scene where she performs an abortion on her twin sister's dead body, and the whole identity theft, unexpectedly, I found myself siding with her mother a lot of the time. Maybe this nutcase should get some professional help. 
It's made clear around midway through the game that Julia is an unreliable narrator. Her memory of certain events is unclear, so we can't always trust what we've seen through her eyes or how she says an event happened. I found this to be one of the greatest drivers for the storyline. We constantly feel uneasy throughout the game. We can't trust anyone or even rely on the main protagonist. I wish there had been more to this and less ghost hunting. In a way, Martha is Dead is like a ghost of what could have been an incredible game. The storyline feels like the first draft of something amazing that really needed some fleshing out. We could have done with more characters, more people to suspect of the murder, and more questions to ponder over. I feel like there could have been a lot more to it, especially when the game constantly brings up background characters that are talked about but never shown. We could have met the caretaker, the local priest, the nanny, and all of this would have given us more of a mystery and a more fleshed out story to unravel. It would have had us thinking that maybe the nanny did it all along, or maybe it was the priest or the caretaker. If we'd had more interactions with the rebels and Julia and Martha's friend, Lapo, maybe we could have added them to the investigation too. Martha is Dead starts off really well. It is a great introduction to a character who has made a terrible, morally gray choice. It is a really interesting setting and a beautiful map to explore. I loved exploring the scenic locations in the Italian countryside, as well as experimenting with the photography assets. You feel attached to the character and her love for her twin sister, so the stakes of the investigation feel high. The only problem is that all of this slips away the further you progress, until you realize that the story is missing something. With its incredible twist and captivating storytelling, Martha is Dead really could have been something breathtaking. Unfortunately, it misses the mark. I enjoyed it up until the final act, and played it non-stop over two days to find out what had happened, which is why I would very cautiously recommend this game. Jess has reviewed Martha is Dead on PlayStation 5, with a review copy provided by the developer. Thank you all for watching! For more like this, make sure to find us at GameLuster.com, and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. Give us a like and comment if you have anything you'd like to say, or any questions about the game. Make sure to head to GameLuster.com to see Jess's spoiler-filled review of Martha is Dead, including her thoughts on the not-so-good ending.